Okay, welcome everybody. On behalf of CWA's Technical Certification Program, thank you for joining us for this update about the new Collection System Maintenance Grade 1 exam. So today your presenters are myself, Nora Duffy. I'm the Director of Certification on CWEA staff. Um, we have Michael Maurice, he's COO and Project Manager for Danis and Company, who are our exam development consultants. And Tony Tompkins, who is Chief Plant Operator for the City of Barstow, and he's currently CWA's Technical Certification Program Executive Committee Representative um, on behalf of Collection Systems. So our objectives today are that by the end of this webinar, you'll understand the key steps in developing a professional certification exam, the key changes for the new CSM1 exam, and how to use the new exam blueprint. Um, we're gonna make this presentation short and leave plenty of time at the end for your questions. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, um, please type them into the Q&A box. So before we get started, we just want to ask you a brief poll to re figure out what your motivation is for joining us today. Um, it'll let us know what content to focus on. So if you could just indicate your primary interest, if you are a trainer, um, if you supervise people that need to get certified, or if you're interested for yourself and you're planning on getting certified. Going to give it another second here. Okay, great. So it looks like most of you are here because you're interested in taking the exam. So that's great. Um, but we'll also to make sure to include um, information for those of you that will be training. Okay. Hopefully you guys can all see my screen again. So we work with some outside organizations in order to develop and deliver high quality professional certification exams. So I wanted to take a moment to highlight our partners today. CWEA is a member organization of the Institute for Credentialing Excellence. They're an organization that establishes standards and promotes best practices within the credentialing community. And CWA's TCP staff, we earn our credentialing specialist certificate through ICE. So we practice what we preach and credentials are not just for the water sector. Next we have Danis and Company. They're our exam development experts and Michael's with us today. So I'll let him tell you more about what they do in a moment. And finally, we work with Pearson View as our exam administrator. So they have secure test centers that are located all over the nation. It allows us to offer our computer-based exams on demand throughout the year and offer accurate scoring and immediate exam results. So I'll hand this over to Michael, who'll tell you a bit about Danis and Company and what they do and how they help us ensure that our exams are fair, accurate, and reliable measures of competency. Great, thank you, Nora. It's great to be with you all today. Um, my name is Michael Maurice, and I uh, work with Danis and Company. We're a psychometric program evaluation and accreditation consulting firm. Uh, we're based on the other side of the country in Virginia, um, but we love to uh, travel around to wherever our clients are at to help them uh, build and develop high quality exam programs. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about what we do and, and what psychometrics is. Um, but I know that Nora is going to go into a deeper dive into the exam development process. And so I, I'll kind of skip over some of that because we'll be getting to that in a little bit. Um, but at Danis and Company, we like to say that we've been making psychometrics easy and even fun, if you can believe it, since 2008. Um, we understand that exam development and psychometrics can seem like a foreign language sometimes. And so we work alongside our clients to uh, demystify and make the process as easy and enjoyable as possible. The end goal is always for, um, to create a high quality exam program that we can attest to being fair, valid, reliable, and defensible. And we have several psychometric tools that we use to ensure validity and reliability throughout the exam development process. Um, Amanda Danis 
uh, who is our CEO and lead psychometrician. Um, she couldn't be on the call today, but she has her PhD in assessment and measurement. And so she's our, our chief uh, expert. So what is psychometrics? Uh, there's a definition in front of you here, the science of measuring mental capacities and processes. Uh, it's a field that many people haven't heard of before, but essentially it's using quantitative psychology and a lot of statistics to uh, measure and assess knowledge, tasks, and abilities. So some psychometrics, there's different tracks. Uh, some focus solely on cognitive ability tests. So think your SATs or standardized tests that uh, people take in high school or college. Whereas in industry and certification programs like this one, we're wanting to measure a candidate's knowledge required for a job and their ability to complete the tasks that are required for that job. So we use a process that ensures that all the content that ends up on the exam can be tied directly to knowledge and tasks that are required in the job role. Um, when we're developing certifications for job roles that are responsible for ensuring public health and safety, uh, such as the CSM1, we want to be especially sure that the, exams, uh, the exam is effectively measuring the knowledge and abilities of the candidate. And we also know that uh, in, when we're working on certifications that are a requirement for those that are in the job role, we want to make sure that the test is not biased in favor or biased against any candidate, regardless of their background. It needs to be a, a level field for, for everybody that's taking the test. So to achieve all of these things, we use a combination of quantitative statistics, qualitative review, and extensive content review by experts in the industry. Um, and while the psychometric and statistical tools that we use are an important piece of the puzzle to ensure exam quality, or exam quality um, the biggest factor in successful exam development is the organizational leadership and the quality of the subject matter experts that are involved in the process. So I just want to take a moment and brag um, to let you know that the CSM program is in excellent hands with Nora and her team. Um, we work a lot with different certification program directors and CWEA is among the top in terms of being on top of every little detail that goes into successful test development. The subject matter experts that were involved in the process through participating in the job task analysis portion, writing and reviewing exam questions, um, participating in the beta test that we send out, and conducting the standard setting exercise were fantastic to work with. Subject matter experts are generally really busy people, um, but they're essential to this process. So um, if you work with subject matter experts that are slow to respond or that you have to follow up with, like it's kind of like pulling teeth to get what you need from them, it can really slow down the timeline for the exam development. So um, the ones that we worked with, with CWEA, um, were absolutely amazing to work with. Not only are they experts in the industry, but they were super responsive and stepped up to complete any tasks that we asked of them. Um, and we could tell that they care deeply about ensuring that this program is high quality and successful. So it took a lot of work uh, and, and the contributions of many people to get us here. But at the end of this um, nine, 10 month process that Nora will talk about in a moment, um, and we hope that it was enjoyable for everyone that was involved. We now have an updated CSM1 exam that's aligned with the job role and industry standards. So I just wanted to thank you all for being so great to work with. Um, we definitely enjoyed the process, so thank you. Um, and now I'll be uh, here for, for questions um, that I think we're gonna do at the end, um, but I'll turn it back over to Nora to talk more in depth about the process that we went through over the past several months. Great, thank you so much, Michael. And I fully agree that the subject matter experts that we worked with on this project were just the best. Um, in terms of demystifying the exam development cycle, um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because it is highly technical and a little bit complicated and um, not super relevant for people that are just wanting to know what are the changes to the exam. Um, but I do think it's important to understand the process, um, especially as a certificate holder, it's going to be going through the process. So, it's just a high level look at the basic process that we follow. Um, it is a very iterative process with, oops, with a lot of back and forth between the um, steps as needed. Um, but we start off with a job task analysis up here. And a job task analysis is really key. Um, it's a study that uses a panel of experts from a cross section of facilities around the state to define what the job role is. And after we do that, we validate those findings by using even more subject matter experts and asking them to rate the job tasks based on how frequently they perform them 
and how critical it is to their job. So we take all that information about what the job role looks like and we use it to develop the exam blueprint um, or content outline for the exam. From there, subject matter experts will write exam questions, which will go through an extensive review process. And then those items are used to create the exam forms that match our exam blueprint. Finally, um, and this is a new addition to the process, those items are beta tested by people in the field. So this allowed us to make sure that the questions were performing the way they were supposed to before we put them on the live exam. We then go through a standard setting process where we establish what the passing score will be for the exam. We use the modified ANGOF method, which I won't get into today, but it is widely accepted as the best practice for establishing a passing score for professional certification exams. We then publish our exams with our test administrator. Um, and once we begin to administer them to candidates, we monitor them accordingly. So takeaway from this is that our exams are developed by water professionals and for water professionals under the guidance of CWA staff and exam development experts. So now I'm gonna hand it over to Cody, who's gonna talk a little bit about the committee and their goals for this update. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Cody Tompkins. I'm, uh, as uh, Nora mentioned, a chief plan operator over at the studio of Barstow, uh, oversee uh, the collection system uh, operations as well, and hold a, a grade four certification through CWA through collection system maintenance. Um, I, I also want to reiterate this process, while it was ex extremely um, detail oriented um, and took quite a bit of time to get accomplished, um, CWA staff was absolutely amazing and uh, Michael's team uh, was great to work with. But uh, CWA listened to uh, all the feedback of its members, uh, the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, and we poured over all the comments left uh, in the exam. Um, we listened to the emails and calls, and then the TCP committee uh, really took uh, everything on board and addressed the concerns um, from everything that we were hearing from you guys uh, as certified um, holders and individuals who are looking to become certified. Um, and we had various goals and kind of refined those goals as that feedback started to pour in. Um, but some of the, the main um, goals that we had were to uh, update, update the uh, job role uh, to reflect the current conditions in the field. I know I've been in the industry for now, I don't know, about 17, 18 years. And while 18 years ago, I may have been doing one thing, I think our industry as a whole has just really kind of changed uh, over the last decade. Um, and so kind of updating some of that information and making sure that it's uh, relevant uh, to today's practices was probably will be the most important. Um, we also wanted to make sure that it was clear to, uh, to the candidates as far as uh, what the exam covers. Uh, there's nothing worse than walking into an exam, believing that you've, you've taken time to, to study and, and prepare for that exam and to find out that everything you studied wasn't on the exam. So um, we wanted to make sure and clear that up. And then provide um, fewer but more comprehensive uh, reference materials, um, which I think the collection system um, was well overdue for that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much for that page. Uh, let's see here. So, um, you know, the collection system grade one uh, by the numbers um, just, man, was probably our largest and, and daunting uh, task. Um, this project has been uh, worked over and for about seven months, uh, CWA has done a, a phenomenal investment, I think with about $29,000 uh, into this program alone. Um, and uh, by the end of the project, uh, we're looking at about 250 collection system professional contributions and in, in development of just this one exam. So it, it's a huge undertaking just to, to review and update um, the CSM1. Uh, we haven't even, I think it's one of our largest pools. It's, a, it's been a, fa a fantastic project and we're, we're glad that it's, uh, it's moving along. Great, thank you, Cody. So I just want to highlight some of the key changes um, for the new exam. Um, 
the biggest one being there is a new job task analysis. So we have updated the job role that we are testing. Um, the exam blueprint is clear with a new format. It is now formatted into um, some high level domains, which are broken out into subdomains and then broken out further into individual task and knowledge statements. So we'll, we'll take a look at that in a minute. Um, we have an entirely new item bank. So all of the exam questions on this exam are new, um, which was really important just in terms of keeping it fresh, keeping it current, um, and making sure that nobody is gonna know what questions we're asking on the exam. We beta tested all of the exam forms. Um, this was a really, I think, big improvement for the program. It allowed us to collect some data about each of the items before they went live and to make sure that they were all performing the way that they should be. Um, and then we updated the suggested references. So when you download the um, study materials, you'll see in there that all of those references should be widely available and easy to find. It's also important to point out a key thing that did not change. And that is that the exam still measures job knowledge at the grade one level. So this exam is not designed to be easier or harder than the previous exam. Um, furthermore, for the grade one, there are no education or experience requirements to qualify. Anyone can apply. It's meant to be entry level and it's designed to test at about one year of experience in the field. So let's take a look at the new exam blueprint. Um, this is a key document in understanding how we've defined the job role and what you could be tested on during the exam. So we reorganized the blueprint. Um, the improved format should be much clearer, um, broken out into those knowledge domains, subdomains, and task and knowledge statements. We've reduced the number of suggested references, and we actually worked with um, CSU Sacramento's Office of Water Programs to provide um, key targeted suggested references for their um, wastewater collection systems manuals. Um, some of the feedback that we were hearing, those manuals are, are really long, um, thick books, and they cover content from everything from the grade one to the grade four level. So we really focused it in on the key areas to study um, as a grade one. So the blueprint is available as a free downloadable PDF on our new certification website. The new website's also a great source of information about how to apply, how to renew, how to maintain certification, how to prepare. Um, so I highly suggest checking that out if you're taking the exam. And so from the blueprint, here's a breakdown of the new exam. There are five high level domains, which you can see here along with their weighting. So the weighting is what percentage of the exam covers that content. So you can see that system operations, inspection and maintenance, um, as well as safety are some key areas. Um, so you'll see here 36% and 23%. So that's the, the bulk of the exam. Um, for those of you that have anxiety around math, I know that's always a big one. Um, I will point out that it's only 8% of the exam. So while math is important, don't let it hold you up too much because on a 100 question exam, math is only eight questions. And here's an example of how the domains are broken up into subdomains and task and knowledge statements. So you will not be asked about every single one of these things on the exam, but each question that you are asked will tie back directly to one of these statements. So these are meant to really break down the subdomains for you and show you what you are expected to know to be considered con competent in that area. Um, if you're wondering more about this, there is a free self-assessment tool on the certification website that will walk you through and help you assess your strengths and weaknesses based on your experience with performing each of these tasks. Um, and that exercise can really help you decide where to target your studying efforts. So we're really excited to announce that we're also gonna be updating collection systems grade two through four exams. Um, 
using this same process this year. We are kicking off exam development next month, and we hope to have the exams available by July of 2020. Um, we're just so excited about all the new improvements to the collection system certification program. There's been such a huge outpour of support from the collections community. Uh, so many collections professionals volunteering to be involved and offering up their expertise in any way that they can. So, you know, whether you volunteer as a subject matter expert or just take 10 minutes to answer a survey that we send you, it's really your involvement that makes this program possible and that's allowing CWEA to develop some of the best certification exams in the industry. So that's it. Um, thank you everyone for being here with us today. I hope this presentation was interesting wherever you're at in your certification journey and that it demystified the certification process and helped understand the types of changes that are taking place with the collection system certification program. Um, thanks to Cody and Michael for joining me today and taking time out of your day to be here with us. And we're gonna stay on the line for a little while and answer any questions that you might have. So we'll go ahead and open it up to questions. Oh, this is a good good question just came through and that's when can we expect the new test to go live. Um, the new test starts on July 1st. So very soon now. Um, and in the meantime, the old exam is the one being administered, but on July 1st, we're going to make that switch to the new exam. So someone is asking, I'm scheduled to take the CSM1 exam on June 20th of this year. Um, so if, you're, if your scheduled exam is June 20th, that's today. Maybe you mean July 20th. Uh, what websites do you recommend for study material? Um, I believe there are one or two key websites, and those are listed in the exam blueprint under the suggested references. And we have, if you download the PDF, those will be live links that will take you directly to that website. Another question, where can I get the new 8th edition collections manual? Um, the collections manuals are from the Office of Water Programs, so CSU Sacramento Office of Water Programs, and they have the most current editions available for sale on their website. Okay, so someone asked, how will this affect those that have been studying based on the old CSM study guide? Um, so if you've been studying with the old study guide, it should, a lot of that knowledge should still be applicable to the new exam. Um, we did release the new blueprint um, at the start of April and we emailed everyone that had been signed up for the exam that we knew about that was planning to take it to make sure that they had the new blueprint and were aware of the changes. Um, but if you didn't get that message and you've been studying on your own and you just applied and found out about these changes, I would say download the new blueprint, um, do the self-assessment, see where any of the key changes are, but it is designed to still test the same job role. Um, so I wouldn't say that your study efforts up until now have been wasted. Um, Someone is asking about the rollout for the other grade levels starting in July 2020, if we're going to stagger their release or release them all at once. Um, right now, the plan is to develop and release them simultaneously, so we expect that they would all come out at once, um, but we don't have the exact release dates yet. Um, we'll be keeping everyone up to date as the, as the program goes forward, and we'll give um, a lot of advance notice 
both with the blueprint so people can study for the new exams and also um, the date so that they can make their plans. Okay, great. So it looks like we've addressed most of the questions that people asked. Um, we will, if any of them need email follow up, I can email everyone with, um, you know, like the, the links to the blueprint and the new website. Um, if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out um, to myself or anyone at the CWA member services department. Great. Well, thank you everyone so much um, for joining us today. I hope that we answered all of your questions and that you found it useful. And best of luck with your certification plans. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.